Don, was it 1964 when you cracked America? Quite literally, yeah. I mean, what happened was our manager, Ryan Spermstein, he was always, you know, throwing these Tupperware parties, you know, and he was forever playing the soundtrack to West Side Story, you know, and I just got sick of it, you know, and I took it off the turntable and threw it, you know, and it cracked on the fourth track, you know, which I believe was America, you know, and it, it didn't please him too much, you know. No, 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 I mean when you conquered America. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, that was the, uh, the Ned Gullivan show. <laughs> yeah. Right now, we have something special. Now, everybody that works with me here in the studio agrees with me that nobody has ever experienced the type of excitement, like the type of excitement that's been stirred up by these young boys who come from other school in England who call themselves the Doos. And tonight, right now, we're going to be entertained by it. Right now, here's the Doos singing a song called Love Speaks Louder Than Words. The Doos, ladies and gentlemen, yeah! And there was a power cut, just as we hit the first notes, you know. And we weren't seen by anyone. We had the lowest viewing figures in the history of American television, you know, but we carried on, you know, regardless. Talk about truth, talk about fear, trying to talk your way out of here. Keep on talking, make your love speaks louder than words. Cause it's a matter of pain, it's a matter of pride Matter of picking up truth from lies Matter of fact, love speaks louder than words But I do remember our manager, uh, Ryan Spermstein Standing at the side of the stage watching us You know, and he always had a box of Kleenex tissues with him well, I think that must have been to hand out to the teenage girls who were crying all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was one of us, you know. Well, he wasn't one of us, he was one of them, you know. But you know what I mean. <laughs> Our first album in the States, Meet the Doos, you know, it, that went um, AWOL. <laughs> you know, no one was interested at all. But the first song I ever wrote was on that particular album. Little foolish you. our first album, you know, which is called Something Do. You know, that, that was our first album, you know, that couldn't be played on the radio. Why was that, Don? Well, they forgot to put a hole in the middle of it, you know. Crazy. But eventually, you know, when they put the hole in the middle, that's when they played it, and that's when we had our first number one. <clears throat> And then we did a Hard Do's Night, which was the soundtrack to the film, of the album, of the same name as the single. Hang on. And that was written on the back of a cigarette packet, you know, the whole album, you know. Hence the title, Smoking Kills. Yeah, and I played some fat maracas on that particular album. I seem to remember that. With your ocean smile, 
You're letting me know So if I reply I'm never alone And in my thoughts I see You smile back at me That way That way And then we did another film called Yelp. Um, another album called Rubber Doos. And then along came Duvolver. Do. And wasn't there a certain amount of controversy surrounding that album, Dom? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, that's just because I happened to say, you know, that I thought, you know, that, you know, we were bigger than a certain dairy product, you know. Yap, yap. Uh, are you sorry for what you've said? Well, originally, you know, I mean, I was pointing out that fact in reference to England, you know, that we meant more to kids than cheeses or any other dairy product. You know, I mean, I wasn't saying we were better or greater or comparing us with a nice red Leicester, you know, or a creamy Wensleydale, you know, I mean, I just said what I said and it was wrong, you know, or it was taken wrong. And now it's all this, you know. But, you know, I mean, I was always looking for new ideas. And new experiences. And that's where I wrote the silent one for the Sergeant Nutter's Phony Parts Club album. Um, oh, yes. <clears throat> Was that inspired by the babysitter, George? No. No, the babysitter had nothing to do with it, you know. It was... It was a song about flatulence. If you really want to know. <laughs> to the press that I'd taken margarine. What a mistake that was. How many times have you taken margarine? About four times. Yeah. Where did you get it from? Well, I can't tell you that, can I? Yeah. I can't tell you where I got it from, you know, because that's, it's advertising, you know. Don't you think you should have kept it quiet? Well, I'd, I'd be quite prepared, you know, just not to let this go any further, you know, if you don't. I don't want to spread margarine. I won't spread it if you don't spread it. But I can guarantee that right now you probably are spreading it. You know, and yet we still came up with great music. Forget all the things that you know. Relax and go with the flow. Um, you then wrote The Walrus and the Carpenter from the, um, the Blistery Saw album. Um, was that written under the influence of something, Don? No, it was written after I'd seen a documentary about Richard Carpenter, you know, and he just adopted a walrus, you know, and that was it, you know, plain and simple, you know. Walked along the ocean tide, the carpenter that by my side will be spied. Oh, 
then in 1968, we made the Shite album. You know, which was Shite. <clears throat> and it was around this time that I felt like we were just drifting apart, you know, and Don had met Coco, the clown. And he'd fallen in love with her, you know, and he used to bring her to recording sessions. And she'd sit there, you know, making <laughs> making dogs out of balloons, which was kind of infuriating, you know, especially when you were trying to sing and all you could hear was <laughs> all this business. <laughs> yeah, but by 1969, you know, it was all winding down. You know, our manager, you know, Ryan Spermstein, he'd had enough. And he went backpacking in Blackpool, you know, so it was left to me, you know, to take over the reins, you know, which I did, you know. Especially when I called round at Saul's house for a cup of sugar and he said he didn't have any when I'd seen him the night before in Tesco's buying a bag so I just knew it was time to call it a day <clears throat> well I mean you know I mean I just don't give a cup of sugar to anyone you know <clears throat> well I bought was that sweetness <laughs> ah but it was great fun you know it says here Where's that chicken soup anyway? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. One rockin' chill, two rockin' chills, three rockin' chills. Four rockin' chills Five rockin' chills Everybody fooled it Six rockin' chills Get a little bit fooled it Seven rockin' chills Get the weed off your shooter Eight rockin' chills We're bar in a wheelchair Nine rockin' chills We're bar in a wheelchair Ten rockin' chills We're gonna have a good time Ten rockin' chills Twelve rockin' chairs Thirteen rockin' chairs